Welcome to Brands, Beats, and Bites, the intersection of brand, tech, and culture. The greatest hits edition, D2 Tell. Oh, we got the techniques one and two right here. Scratching, funk master, flex in the building. We got hits. And here's the question that we're going to have people run down for us. These are the greatest answers that we have got on, frankly, my favorite question. What was your biggest F up? All right, DJ, drop the needle. We had a lot of successes, balling out of control, congratulations, decathlete, etc. But what was your biggest F up, Scott? And what did you learn from it? All right. Come clean, Scott. I've had many. You come <laughs> yeah, clean. yeah. Come clean. <laughs> Look, I'm going to just go there because I think it's the obvious one and the most juicy to talk about. It's Sprite. DC, you're, you're going to both hate me and love me for speaking to this. Uh, I think you're going to hate me for bringing up a very dark period Ooh. when Sprite lost its way yes. and unwound a lot of the insanely great work you did in the 90s. That's on um, you, Scott. But, <laughs> but I think you will love me for recognizing that I screwed up, learned from it quickly, and had the good sense to help get it back on track. I can't wait so, to hear this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go there. So here's what happened. Way back when, as a young buck, I, I got promoted pretty early into the brand director role on Sprite and was handed the keys. So I think you all know one of the coolest brands on the planet. You know, DC, you and your crew had created, you know, something special. But Thank you, brother. you'd moved on to other cool things outside the company. And I think over time, because of all the challenges of, of soda in general, it, mm-hmm. it just, it stagnated a little bit. And my boss at the time had really challenged me to quote, jumpstart the business and was convinced that we needed to expand our audience. Got and it. Like no, no, was, any, that, was that, was that you, you may not want to name names. Do you want to name yeah. names or not? Cause I, I think I know nah, you're talking about. Let's not name names. Yeah, okay, keep going. Yeah, let's, yeah, 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 let's, let's, let's be straight. Yeah, okay, let, okay. We don't need names. No, 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 no. Go, go yeah. ahead. Play it straight. And like any, you know, ambitious, excited brand director, excited to make his mark. I did what a lot of people would do. I hired a hot agency, the hottest, I think, created a good brief, I think. And we started cracking. <laughs> we tested the work. We saw really good signals from the research and importantly, research with the new target. And we went for it. We launched an entirely new campaign directed at a newer, broader audience. And as you know, I mean, not surprisingly, that work landed with a thud. Mm -hmm. Um, Not so much because, in my opinion, and we can argue about this, but the work was objectively bad. But honestly, because we had abandoned our core. We were so unbelievably intoxicated by new and different so hung up on reaching a new audience that we blew past all of the things DC that had made that brand special in the first place. Mm-hmm. A strong POV, mm-hmm. a laser focus on culture, mm-hmm. building community, an emphasis on winning with a smaller influential core. Mm-hmm. You know, we were trying to be all things to everybody. It was a very powerful and humbling lesson, something that I've never forgotten. Mm-hmm. And to this day, it has shaped my marketing approach in a big, big, big way. Never forget your core. Feed it. Mm-hmm. Nurture it and build from there. It's it's a foundational lesson that I prioritize. And it's honestly at the core of, of what I'm doing here at CPK. So there you go, DC. I'm offering you a very public apology <laughs> um, for my Sprite uh-huh. misfire. But no, it was coming from a good place and... I worked as hard as anyone to help get it back on track. So there it is, man. Scott, much respect for acknowledging the misstep. More importantly, thanks for sharing what you've learned. And then finally, I've been trying to hunt you down. I knew there was a reason you wanted this conversation. No, 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 no. All right. This does bring some thoughts to mind. You have mentioned, I think, the ultimate silver bullet, which is never forget your core. We have commandments that we use. And one yeah. of our commandments is thou shalt sacrifice. Commandment one. Commandment number one. And it is very difficult for brands to do this, many of them to do this, many people to do this, because to what you just said, Scott, they want to be all things to all people. And sometimes our brand leaders have the grass is greener 
So let me go over here and maybe pick up yep. something that looks like it might be a little more sexy and ignore their core. But there's another thing here that I want to point out. And then I want to ask a question of you regarding uh, California Pizza Kitchen to what you mentioned earlier. At the Coca-Cola company, you can have a rather significant amount of money to do things. You can. This is why yeah. the CPK person was yep. like, okay, how much money do you want, Scott? Right. I know you wear Coke. All right. So, but having money can be a good thing and a bad thing. Oh, yeah. 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 The good thing is that you have the resources to, when you did this new campaign, Scott, everybody knew it. That was the good thing. And then when you did this campaign, Scott, everybody knew it. And that was the bad, bad thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. Because of the yeah. money. All yeah. right. So yeah. you're now at California Pizza Kitchen. All right. They don't spend money on marketing the way that Coke did or maybe even does. So how are you going about driving that top mind awareness that you mentioned and that bottom of funnel profitability without a bunch of money? Yeah, look, it's a lot of what I said in the beginning. It's in, in the messages that we've been, been talking about here with the Sprite example. You know, I feel like if you really get into CPK's messaging, we have been talking to our core and potential new users like an advertiser. Mm -hmm. We have lost any sort of human connection. We have been selling instead of connecting. Oh, we have been man. talking to what our, you said. What you said right yeah. there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can give you a bunch of sort of larger ideas and strategic imperatives I have around CPK. Mm -hmm. But honestly, DC, the, the, the first thing that I want to do and what I've challenged my team is we got to be human. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to talk to people like, you know, the, the awesome guests that they are. And these, these are our most special people in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we have got to stop talking to them like we want to transact. We need to talk to them like they're human and everything we do should be something that you would want to forward, share, and hold up is like, you know, this is important. And unfortunately, I think we've lost sight of that in the sort of push for transactions and efficiency. And I hope to change that. Wonderful, Scott. Really cool, Wonderful. Scott. I'll just end this by saying, you know, a thank you, Scott, for getting many calls from DC saying, "What in the blankety blank are they doing?" It's right. <laughs> okay. So now this is a you full know where it all okay. started. <laughs> all right. All right, bro. Uh, the the person, the executive who doubles businesses and such, you have to have a lot of W's in order to do that kind of thing. For this question, I want to know absolutely nothing about any of those W's, bro. <laughs> I want to know about your biggest F up, the big one. The It's like, oh my goodness, how did I get myself into this? And importantly, what you learned from it. All right. So now I'm going to ask you to get comfy because I've got a story here. Do so, it. <laughs> so this one's a little bit more lighthearted. We're going to change the tone here a bit. But uh, I'll take you back to my early 20s and my first job at the advertising agency, Bailey Lowerman. So I was hired as a project manager for new business and then quickly worked my way up through the organization, um, became an account executive. And the client that I was in charge of is a major financial institution in the Midwest. So this is in Omaha, Nebraska. And their partnership with the University of Nebraska Lincoln Athletics. So nice. I have the I have the background in athletics. So they loved that I had that insight. And so that's why I got put on the account. Brooke, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to do this for the brand nurse. For those who don't, and I've never been to Nebraska, but I'm a uh -huh. big sports fan. So I want to paint the picture even more. Is it if I'm not mistaken, on football Saturdays, um the stadium is what what is it i i remember it's the it's, it's the, the third, third largest, largest in 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 nebraska on game days right yes that is correct because the right. stadium holds 90 some thousand so everyone descends upon it even during our worst seasons we're still holding a sellout streak um which says wow. something about our fan base but right. yes you're correct it's third largest city in the that's state why i nebraska. wanted because it's so huge it's there's mm -hmm. there's huge connection to to Nebraska athletics. So I just wanted to make sure the branders understand that. Yes. Thank you. And um, so 
uh, first national bank decided to sponsor um, Husker athletics. There was a great, you know, sponsorship deal. So they had signage and all the stadiums and, and part of the deal was with um, a couple of the sports, they got to do an activation. So they got to be a sponsor of a game and then give away something or do a, I don't know, an in-game promotion. So the weekend is Mother's Day weekend in May. And the Husker baseball team at the time, very, very good. They were on their way um, potentially to the College World Series, also hosted in Omaha, Nebraska. And, <laughs> and they were playing at the time we were still in the Big 12. They were playing Baylor. So it was a really big weekend. There was going to be, you know, tens of thousands of families at this event. And one of the things that we decided to do was we were going to do a giveaway. So we needed, I think, 10,000 items for this weekend. And we were talking about how giveaways should be for the fans, something usable, something of value. We don't want to just give away a pen with our logo on it. Like, what is it that is something that they can actually use? So we said, well, it's going to be May. It's going to be sunny. There is no like sun cover at all in the stadium. So let's hand out sunscreen to everybody that walks into the, the stadium. Mm -hmm. So client loves the idea. We're all on board. We thought, oh, this is, this is going to be great. And so the uh, copywriter goes to, to work on what is going to say, what we're going to write on the um, sunscreen packets. And we go back and forth. And as we've all experienced, either on the agency side or the client side, the client wanted to change the creative. So I forget what the original line was, but the line that ended up being approved was protect your skin like we protect your assets. Seems harmless, right? And that was, you know, the client uh, made that modification, which is fine. That's their right. Oh, and, I don't oh, like no. it. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so great. Okay. So... The week of the, so everything is great. Everyone approves it. Yep. The week of the game arrives. I get to work and my desk, I walk in, you know, 730 in the morning, my desk is covered in condoms. And <laughs> I, I was like, what is happening here? And I'm looking around and I was like, who is, the, I mean, literally there's probably like 500 condoms on my desk and uh -oh. they were green and it, I saw right away, I saw this word protect. And I was like, oh, dear God. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And I look at it and I pick it up. Protect your skin like we protect your assets. It is the sunscreen packets and these square foil packets. And I, I mean, there is no mistaking what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh. so I was oh. like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's worse, but the word protect was on there. And so, <laughs> oh, and then the material, I mean, it was just, and so I, I kind of just like, you know, my heart's beating pretty fast. And so I take it into my boss's office and I said, did, you know, I got the samples or I got the, the, um, sunscreen today and I throw it on his desk and he goes, what the hell is this? And I said, that's the sunscreen. And he goes, it looks like a condom. And I said, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, you don't say. <laughs> don't say. And he goes, well, we can't hand these out. And I was like, yes, I know this. And then he said, well, how did this happen? And he goes, you saw a proof, right? And I said, yes, I saw a proof. But what I didn't see, I didn't get samples. Like I should have gotten a sample. Mm -hmm. So I like in my mind, it was going to be more rectangular in shape, um, not this square. Um, so that was my first lesson learned early on is, okay, not only do you see and approve a proof, but you get a sample of it. Mm. But this, the biggest lesson and the biggest takeaway for me was, okay, now I'm going to have to call the client and tell them what happened. And yeah. we're going to have to pay for this, but I'm not, I can't just call them and say, Hey, we screwed up. I had to call them and say, we screwed up, but here is what we're going to do to fix it. That's right. Mm. Mm. So and that has been a lesson that I've taken throughout my whole career is you don't call without either some one, at least one solution, or at least saying, we have some ideas, just give me, you know, a couple hours and I'll run them past you. So that was a, a huge moment in my career. And our solution was, yes, we're not going to hand these out, obviously. Mother's Day weekend, it, you know, that's a family event. But why don't we donate them to, because May is, I found out May or June is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. 
So I said, why don't we donate these to the dermatology clinics in South O where there is a population that is really going to need them and maybe doesn't have the affordability to go buy some of this. So we got some good, um, feel good PR out of that from the donation, but I at least presented the solution when I called. So the client was happy that there was a solution. She wasn't happy that we were going to trash, you right. know, this, but, um, and the baseball weekend, you know, was just announcements over the PA. There wasn't anything handed out, but funny and mortifying at the same time. <laughs> well, we love these stories because we all have them, right? <laughs> and we all have them. And what I think is most interesting is you even at, at an early part in your career went to owning it and solutioning it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I think is really cool about the story. You have to. And I, I just right. want that to be, no matter the age, like that is just something that you you need to do. And there's going to, I mean, there's a ton more examples of that, but yeah, you have to own it. The client is going to be way more forgiving. And yep. honestly, because we presented those solutions, she was willing to split the cost of it because she goes, well... I was the one that said we should use the word protect. So, I mean, we got a good laugh out of it, but right. um, so that was also good. I think if I just would have called and said, I've got bad news, it would have gone another way. No question. It would have gone another way. D and I have been on the other side of those calls. <laughs> yeah. And the, the first question is, okay, so what's your fix? Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, no, you, you. it's great that you own it, but you also have to at least have a solution. Exactly. I'll quickly say this. First, Brand Nerds, what you heard from Brooke is an example of getting lemons and turning it into lemonades. Yep. Throughout your career, you're going to get lots and lots of limons. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the key is how do, you, how do you make that lemon into a lemonade? The second is uh, there's a similar story at a really, really big company uh, that is a global brand in the beverage space and the color of their can is red. <laughs> and they had, uh, they, they do some of the biggest summer promotions on the globe. <laughs> Similarly, with regard to getting a sample, uh, okay. I wasn't a part of this, but I saw it unfold. There was a promotion that was called Red Disc, as in a disc, summer on the top of no. the can. That's the, that is what it was called. I don't know what happened, but somehow the S got swapped out for a C. Oh, and no. that was ugly. Mm. <laughs> that was ugly. All right. With that, Larry, <laughs> shall we go to the next question, please? <laughs> Maybe there should have been a co-promotion. A co <laughs> I was just going to say, could have had a co-promotion with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. There's a lot of, and, and by the way, and, and D, I'm glad, you know, the point is, even at places like the most savvy market, oh, yeah. this stuff happens. This happens. Time. Yes, uh, this happens. Greg, Larry listed your many accomplishments. You have learned a lot. You were a young pup. Uh, with a with a business card with Nestle vice president of sales on it. You were tearing through your career in the early days uh, and you've had a lot of successes. But no doubt, Greg, you've also had some F-ups. And so what we're looking for in this question is, what was your biggest, the one that's epic out there in your mind? And, and it was on you, Greg, not Oh, if the CEO had decided this or my team, it's on you, Greg. And what did you learn from said F up? Yeah, well, when we were uh, talking about these questions, I this came first thing popped in my head. I'm like, oh no, you can't go there. Um, and <laughs> after sleeping on it, I thought, yes, I got to go there. Uh, and you all will laugh because this is when I was in the CPG world, but it, it had to do with an executive search where I was a candidate. Okay. And I made a major, major screw up that rocked me to my core. And to this day has made me a much better human being, parent, father, brother, wife, husband, you know, executive in every regard. I was in the midst of final round interviews for a big job uh, through an executive search of a great guy who's a legend. I won't name him here. He's no longer business. 
Uh, and he really did a great job of creating mystique around the search process. Uh, you know, this was first class flights, private dossiers and what's going on, private meetings. And I was going into the final round interview with the president and the recruiter told me exactly what she was going to offer me. And I went in, for the, but I had to get through this round. I went through the final meeting. Uh, sure enough, as planned at the end of the meeting, she said, we'd like you to join. She slid a piece of paper in front of me and it had a number on it that was different not higher, but of course, lower. It was $10,000 right. lower than what the recruiter had told me. Mm. And instead of sitting on that, I said, Ooh, I actually thought it was going to be higher. And she said, why? And I said, because the recruiter told me. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Can you see where ooh. this is going? Yeah. Yeah. Well, before you go next, uh, Greg, let's just do sound effects here on uh, Brands Bits yeah. Bites. Beep, beep. <laughs> that's Greg. That's Greg Houston, backing up over the Houston. <laughs> we have a problem. Yeah. So I did this on the spot. She gracefully, yep. elegantly leaned over, grabbed the letter, scratched in the new number. Yeah. Which she, I'm presumably, had told the recruiter. I don't, you know, I don't yep, know, yep, and yep. don't doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but I threw this poor man under the bus. Um, we shook hands. She said, "Congrats. Let's talk about where we're going." She said, I'll get this straightened out with HR. We'll get you a new letter, but consider it done. I skipped down Park Avenue, walked in, resigned to my boss, uh, said, I'm making a move. Uh, got home that night. And at that time, an answering machine from the recruiter saying, Greg, don't resign. They're withdrawing the offer. Oh, oh! 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 So needless to say, that was not a good night. My wife and I walked around the woods in northern, uh, north of New York, and uh, we're trying to figure out how do we piece this together? Man, have I screwed up. Uh, and I did oh. some soul searching like I never had before. And, and honestly, today, it was probably the most traumatic. I mean, I've been through some trauma, and all, traumatic business thing I've ever had happen. And it shook me to my mm. core. And thank goodness, it changed me for the better forever. And I learned so many valuable life lessons with that little moment where I let my lips get out ahead of that, what was going on. I, and, and we could have an exercise on how should you have handled that? Yeah, 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 were, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys would have had 20 ideas for me on how to handle it appropriately. Yeah. I did not uh, and forever changed me. And I'm now grateful. And I've since told my, uh, my search friend that set this career. And now he takes credit for my career in search, which has been, I've been blessed, but uh, uh, that was a major screw up that I'll never, ever forget. Well, thank you for sharing that, yeah. Greg. That's amazing. I mean, that's, wow. You can see how it shake you through the course. So are there one, two or three things you said there's many like, can you cull it down a couple of the big lessons that you take from that? Uh, well, my, my mother always told me, God gave you two ears and one mouth, use them in that ratio. So I was running my mouth, uh, immediately quick stream of thought, which I shouldn't have. Um, so pausing to think before you react. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I should have, I rushed to go resign. Yeah. I, you know, so I, I've, just to fast forward the story. So I did later have to meet with her again and explain the situation and apologize. And they did go forward with me. So the job did work out, but I always had that kind of over my head. And I, I just learned a lot of things about being honest, being straightforward, uh, having the social IQ to figure out when and how to handle that sort of situation. And I handled it poorly. And I, I learned from it. And I, I try to share those kinds of stories with my kids and others to, to, to hope that other people don't step on the same mistakes I did. But, you know, some of these mistakes that are most painful are the ones you never forget. Oh, yeah. We could feel it from you even retelling the yeah. story years later. Oh. It hurt. And, and it's just ironic that I've been in search for 25 years now. Oh, that that's right. what, you know, that was the first thing that popped into my head. Wow. Thank you, uh, Greg, for your... Um vulnerability Thank you. you have an esteemed career you've done various and sundry things you have met the fork in the road and consistently picked the direction that worked for you not only professionally but personally so you've had some successes but you've also had some failures and that is the heart of this question <laughs> Two-part question. Your biggest F-up 
of all time, the greatest f up of all time, <laughs> and what you and importantly, what you learned from it. Yeah, I, I think my f up, and it's probably been consistent when I when I do fuck up, is I didn't take the time to pause. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I. I I didn't take the time to really count and say, let me just think about that. I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. And my sense is that that was partially because of my childhood and and the triggers that happened. Mm -hmm. And I never, I learned, but I learned later in life that the best response is often, I like to think about that. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. And let me, let me get back to you tomorrow on that. And I think that's my biggest F up is doing the, not doing that professionally or personally. Mm. Like allowing emotion to carry too much weight. Emotions are always going to carry weight, right? We're emotional beings. Right. That's what branding is about, right? So like capturing the emotion of a brand and a consumer, bringing it together in a, in a more you know elevated way. And I think professionally in my career, it was it would have been helpful if I just paused. And just said, you know what? I'm going to count to 10. I'm going to think about that. I'm going to get back to you. And always been uh, ready to just take my time. Take my time. Because I think in the heat of the moment, we're always trying to answer. We're always trying to be smart. We're always trying to uh, move ahead. Whatever it may be, we're always trying to protect ourselves. Sometimes it's okay to say, you know what? That's a great question. Or thank you for that. And I'd like to think about that. That, I say, is probably a theme that I could have worked on earlier in my career. I could have, I should have. That's so deep. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, D, can, do you mind if I follow on this one? Mm-hmm. Please. So Roger, um, I love that. I think everyone on earth can relate to what you just said. Um, and I want to say this to the brand nerds out there, the younger brand nerds out there. Um what Roger's saying is so huge. If you say, hey, I need time to think about it. Let me get back to you. And people don't honor that. They're just telling you that you don't want to work with them. Mm-hmm. Right? So there, that is the perfect thing to do at all times, unless you're facing a life in that situation and alligators chasing you at the moment, right? Unless it's fight or flight at that moment, that is really the best way to handle any situation. And if somebody uh, hits you back, like I said, they're just showing you, they're showing you their cards and they're telling you basically to run away. Well, Larry, I think what you're also really saying, which is super important for everyone, especially younger in the career, to realize, you know, it's your career is a two-way street, right? That's right. People are telling you like whether they want you here or not. And yep. you get to say, do I want to be here or not? That's right? right. And so people are giving you information. It's like, you know, like a bat with radar. They're giving you data points. And you want someone who's going to respect you, to, to lead you, to be supportive, to ask you questions. And the truth is, we don't always have the answer because there's rarely the answer. I always say, like, I, that's why in business, we think, oh, who's the expert? Well, experts are right 50% of the time. Because... <laughs> And that's a good percentage. Yeah, because there's always the other half of the experts that are wrong 50% of the time. And so if everyone knew the answer, there wouldn't be an industry for everybody else, like consultants or venture capital firms or private equity, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need all this other, you know, know, training. The truth is most people are doing the best they can. Most people want to keep their job, right, and improve their lot in life. And most people just want to be in a healthy environment. Most people don't need their own way. They just want to know that there there is a multiple ways to be successful in a company, mm-hmm. in a collaborative way. I th- so I think people want to give support and want support, and I think that's really where I believe your point is so important. If someone is giving you a message that says, "No, we don't want your opinion. We don't want to hear from you, or you have to do it this," way. I mean, then you go, "Well, is that right for me?" Right. And so I think that's what you said is critically important for everyone listening. Pay attention to the, not only the people around you, but the people above you, because 
that that's where you're heading, right? Is you want to head up. That's right. You want to head forward. Yo, Fish, do you remember one of our colleagues? Uh, his name is Jeff Herbert. He was the son of Ike Herbert. Sure. Who ran the presence, uh, we called it presence back in the day, brand nerds, but it was entertainment and sports before Conan did. Yeah. So Jeff Herbert, his son, uh, grew up at the Coca-Cola company, as many of us did, and went on to senior roles at the Coca-Cola company and uh, and beyond. Uh, Herbert was an was an extreme straight shooter. So here is what he used to say as it relates to this wonderful point you have shared with the brand nerds. That, hey, let me let me think about that. Let, let me give me a moment. Let me come back to you. Herbert used to say this. If you don't know the answer, don't try to pretend like you know the answer. Right. Because if you try to pretend like you know the answer and you're wrong, I and I quote, I'm going to think you're you're a dumbass. OK, so this this was Herbert. So that's one reason, brand nerds, to do exactly what Fish is saying. Give yourself some time. Yep. But the second one is uh, is personal. And I hadn't thought about this until you just shared it. Uh, I grew up, uh, some of you brand nerds know, um, where I believe that love and life were a combination of three C's, chaos, conflict, and criticism. So that was love for me. That was life for me. If if I weren't getting those three things, I didn't think I was in a loving place and I didn't think I was fully living. Uh, I won't go into all of the background now. Fish knows, uh, uh, knows some of it because he and I talked about this. So maybe on another occasion i'll go into this brand notice but right now i won't but just chaos conflict and criticism so because of that i ended up showing up in the world where when things got more chaotic i would slow down some personally what this looked like is having a relationship with someone and they are beginning to get animated and i'm becoming more calm mm -hmm. So I'd never found myself in a situation where I was like, oh, you know what? I need to have a day to think about this. Let me get back to you. Because I was able to slow myself down in those moments because of some of the trauma that I experienced and my coping mechanisms as a child to then answer the question. That said, it doesn't mean I still should not have and still should not ask for the gift of time. I can still do that. So brand nerds, even for those of you out there who think you might have the answer in the moment, still give yourself the permission that Fish has just said to go, you know, let me get back to you. Yep. And, and to that point, Daryl, you know, great leadership will respect it. That's yeah. right. Great Correct. leadership says, you know what, that makes sense, okay. Yeah, I, and then they'll tell you, "I need to hear back from the end of the day tomorrow." But that yeah. is the sound of, of I think smart leadership is giving people the time, yeah, to be thoughtful, yeah. and to really consider the the situation holistically. Thanks, brand nerds, for listening to Brands Beats and Bites. The executive producers are Jeff Shirley, Daryl DC Cobb, and Larry Tame and Haley Cobb, and Jay Tate and Tom Dioro. The pop pop. And that is he. And if you do like this podcast, please subscribe and share. And for those on Apple Podcasts, if you are so inclined, we love those excellent reviews. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and we look forward to next time where we will have more insightful and enlightening talk about marketing.